Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode one of Local to Global. Now, as you can see, our created company is going to be called Canadian Wrestling Coalition. And basically, obvious, well, oh, let, let me start with this. Obviously, the goal is to go local to global, or if we go by sizes in the, the new game. As you can see, we're going to try and go from in, in, insignificant all the way up to Titanic. Uh, which is obviously Canadian domination achieving large size and also 77 in every region of the game world. Now, I don't think I've ever done that before. So it would literally be a first for me on TW, which I feel like would be pretty, pretty incredible, to be honest. Now, in regards to the company itself, as you can see, we've got zero dollars available. We have zero prestige, zero momentum. And of course, we have uh, zero popularity across all of these regions here in Canada. So it's the challenge. And it's the challenge that most of you wanted. Obviously, there was talks of a TNA, the birth of TNA. Uh, but unfortunately, there was no database that I could find that would allow us to, to sort of start back in 2002 and uh, go forward from there. So I'm going to put that on the shelf for now. We might come back to it in the future, but I feel like a local to global is something that I can really get stuck into and be like my real long-term series here on the channel. Now, as far as our character, we've decided to go, well, I've decided to go with Alexander Robinson, who is a former uh, North of the Border wrestler. As you can see, he also worked in Japan with Pride Glory. Uh, none of that's really too important. He's more just a color commentator personality and also a road agent. And I felt like he, being a retired wrestler, obviously nothing to do with CWA at the moment, which I'll go into in a second. He was kind of the perfect retired wrestler that could actually do a lot, of, a lot for us backstage. Uh, he's not particularly good at anything. He's relatively good on the mic um, and probably going to be a lot better than most of the other people that we'll be able to get, uh, especially with our sort of dire financial situation. Um, so this episode, uh, I would like to do a at least one show, probably towards the end of the episode, uh, but obviously we're going to have to go through and hire our entire roster, hire a referee, and yeah, possibly, possibly an announcer. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not too sure about it. We don't actually need an announcer, but I kind of would like to have one anyway. Now, let's have a look at the product very quickly. So, our style name is Time to Take Over. Obviously, local to global, we're trying to take over the world, essentially. And we've got a classic balance product, which is essentially the same as CWA. Now, I mentioned CWA a few times. We are essentially going to be at war with CWA for this series. It is kind of the overarching challenge in the actual series that I've set myself. Obviously, Canadian Wrestling Coalition is, you know, very, very close to the Canadian Wrestling Alliance. And obviously, a coalition and an alliance are essentially the same thing, but just a, a bit different and a, a little bit reworded, as you'd expect. So, yeah. Uh, as you can see, they've also, well, if we go into their profile, um, their product, as you can see, classic balanced. So we're going to be using the same product as them. And like I said, my goal is to, to try and beat them. And we're going to try and run them out of business and obviously eventually take over and become the global company in the game. Now, as you can see here, we've got our little bio here that I wrote, and it says the newest Canadian company in the world. The coalition looks to be the true competitor to CWA and take the place of North of the Border Pro Wrestling from years gone by. One issue stands in the way, as the new owner is yet to realize another new Canadian company has also been formed, being BMCW, Black Maple Championship Wrestling. Black Maple focuses on, focuses on the old school way of doing things and could really be a hindrance to the potential growth of CWC. Do CWA really care about this new company? No, they don't for right now, but that could all change as the new owner is looking to go local to global. So there we go. 
felt like that was a nice little bio there. Uh, obviously, we have uh, our second company that we're going to be essentially going head to head with. This one is also going to be a local to global that I've put into the game. Uh, I've given them 100,000 just to see if they can do anything, essentially. Uh, they've been given an interesting product, which I've gone with a modern throwback. Old but new school wrestling, apparently. It's kind of what I decided. <laughs> what I decided with. Anyway. Uh, also there by we've got Black Maple Championship Wrestling is the new direct rival to CWC. BMCW focuses on using an old school mentality when it comes to pro wrestling. Will they be able to compete in the same market with a hungry new company vying for global success in CWC? Only time will tell. So yeah, they're essentially going to be our competition that we focus on primarily from, I would say, insignificant up to small. And then obviously once we hit medium size, I feel like we'll be focusing a lot more on CWA. Uh, but I just wanted to have a couple of other companies that we're sort of almost targeting towards and that we want to really try and challenge. And obviously, I just feel it, it adds something a little bit and it's going to make this series that little bit more interesting. Now, the next thing I wanted to go over is our events. Now, I'll just go to events down here. Now, I've set these up. Uh, some of these were already implemented when I started the game. Uh, but as you can see, we have a weekly event, which is actually going to be our TV show in the future. And that is CWC Coalition Wrestling. Now, obviously, you might be wondering, that's a, that's a bit of a generic title. Uh, but if we go into CWA, they have a TV show that is called Championship Wrestling. And I feel like Coalition Wrestling, Championship Wrestling, they're going to be held on the same day as well. So we are going to try... Try and go head to head, but obviously we don't even have a TV show at the moment, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I just felt like it was a good way to sort of blend our actual company name. And that's a really nice looking logo. I really like the bear. Kind of symbolizes Canada pretty well. So yeah, that's our essentially what is going to be our TV show. Uh, we've got all these other pay-per-views here. Nothing really that stands out. I This event was called Stampede. Renamed it Spring Stampede, put it at the end of March, which is the first month of spring in Canada. Uh, and then down here, we've also, I actually changed this name as well to Urban Wasteland. And then we have Warzone Night 1 and Warzone Night 2. I feel like Warzone is probably going to be our biggest shows of the year. I don't really, I can't really tell, obviously, but I'm going to treat them as our biggest shows of the year. And of course, they, they happen in July. So basically, night one is going to be like a, a battle royale with the winner of the battle royale getting a world, our main event title. Eventually, it'll probably be a world title. Uh, but for now, I think we want to go with either a Canadian title or a North American title. Not 100% sure on that one yet. Um, that'll be decided for the next episode. Anyway, the rest of the events there, we've got... Pure, pure Disrespect, which is another event that I called, uh, that I changed from one of the generic ones. We've got Insurgency, Night of Combat, Ground Zero, and uh, another one that I also changed, which is Combined Action, which is essentially what a coalition is. So I felt like that was a pretty fitting way for us to end the year with an event that is pretty fitting for the coalition name of our company. Anyway. Uh, I think that's everything we needed to go over in regards to the start of the series, like the introduction part. So the next thing we need to do is hire some workers. Now we're going to be running with five shows per month, which I feel like is kind of the only way to actually increase our popularity enough to start making money. Also needed to show you this, but I forgot about it. We have the economy and wrestling industry of Canada. They're actually both really good. We've got a 53 economy in rising, which is just above average, I would say, and a 73 wrestling industry that is also currently rising. Um, as you can see, our home region is uh, Ontario. And as you can see, CWC and BMCW both are working out of Ontario. So our ourselves and Black Maple 
will really be going at it, especially at the start. Uh, and we might even have some of the same workers. We'll just have to wait and see. Either way, I'm really looking forward to this. Hopefully you guys are as well. You can smash the like button, be much appreciated. All right, so let's get into hiring the roster. Now, I feel like we probably want a relatively small roster to start the game off. Maybe, well, first of all, we need a referee. So let's search for a ref. Because we really don't want... Uh, that's a lot of referees. Uh, let's go with someone that's relatively bad. I feel like that would actually be a good start. Let's go with like a minimum of 40. Actually, let's go with a maximum of 50. And I guess a minimum of 30. Oh, that's fine. All right, so we've got four refs here. Uh, he's got 48. I mean, we kind of just want to go with the cheapest at the moment. So we might want to look at their contracts. So 50 per show, 50 per show. Uh, they're both 48 refereeing. Uh, he's got a contract... He's only 22 years old though, so I kind of like this guy. Also, well, he's on 40 per show with CZCW, also 48. And this guy is also only 50 and he's a little bit lower. I think I like Quincy Jargon. I know he works for another company, which could be a bit of a problem. We could go with Gregory Chapman, who is actually a Canadian referee. But this guy's young. And I like him. I like him a lot. We'll try and get him down to 40 per appearance. Obviously no cover. And again, we'll try no merchandise for him as well. Just so we can essentially make as much money per show. All right. that This might be a bit of a problem. If we're going to have to pay for, for travel, things could get a little bit ugly. Yeah. That's not good. I think we might go with Gregory instead. And he's going to want travel expenses as well. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to go travel expenses, which I really don't like doing. Okay, but there we go. We've got our first referee. It's only 50, but that, that travel ex, uh, expense could be... We have to pay every wrestler's travel expense. We might be in for a, a rude awakening. Now, I really haven't done any research on who I want to sign. Uh, but basically, what, what we're looking for is young guys. Possibly one sort of senior guy that will be our first champion. And we're just sort of going to run with it. Now, we are required to have storylines, so it's also something we need to possibly look into. I'm going to go with a minimum age of 26, and let's also filter out women, because at the moment we're not going to have a women's division. Uh, now, we could go for some really talented guys, like 60 per show here for Aldous Blackfriar. Seems really cheap. Uh, let's also go... Uh, to hire so we don't get any other people that we can't actually use. Now, there's Americana Jr., who I feel would actually be really decent for us. But I think he's actually going to be our first signing. I'm always a big fan of American Elemental. Um, ooh, it's not covered already. Can we get him on 20? That, that's, that's the in interesting question here. All right, so he wants 30, but I'm wondering, will he not require? I guess he won't require any travel. He, he is actually working in Canada at the moment. Um, he's also based in Quebec, so that's interesting. Now, we've got Austin Smooth, of course. You watch my Road to Glory series. You'll know I'm a big fan of Austin Smooth. And I feel like he could definitely be a very, very good worker for us, especially early on. I mean, this is another guy we signed. Brett Kyle. 
Of course, there, there are a lot of workers that I haven't actually looked into. Uh, this guy's got 88 flashiness, which is like almost beyond ridiculous. We've got Captain Canada here, who is a luchador. I kind of like him, though. I kind of like him. Let's get him as well. Seeing as we have, uh, what is it, Americana Jr.? Let's get this guy in as well. Not going to require any travel either. I mean, they, they all pretty much want 10% of the merchandise cost. Or cut, I guess. So he might be in a, a tag team. Uh, again, I would like to get some Canadians. So let me go through here. I mean, we can probably search by Canadian. Never seen this guy before. Deacon Darkhold. Very interesting. Um, Dustin Deuce could be interesting as well. Uh, Eric LaMonica. Now he's Canadian. He's also a high flyer. I'm not too sure if I want a high flyer. All right, we're going to shortlist Ernest Youngman. I mean, you have to shortlist Ernest. He is... He is the GOAT. He really is. And I think we'll we'll try and bring him in as soon as we can. Who's this guy? Flying Patriot. He's, uh, he's relatively bad. Relatively bad. He, he's also really cheap, though. I mean, Gary the Entertainer would be really good as well. Just purely for his entertainment skills. I think I'd prefer to rename him actually as Gary Walker. I think we'll, we'll go for him. Seeing as he's unemployed, he's going to be cheap. The, the travel cover could be a big problem for us. Just don't like the, uh, the travel cover. I think, actually, I think we'll take a miss on him because of that travel cover. I think what we essentially need to do is go for guys that are in Canada... That are going to be cheap. And maybe we can bring in. A couple of guys. That are from outside of Canada. That are going to be super beneficial to the roster. I mean Logan Wolfsbane would be a decent guy to bring in as well. Of course also had him on my Road to Glory series. Hmm. It's all very interesting. I mean, Marcel Lafleur would probably be a good option. He's talented, very strong in the ring. And of course, he's in Canada at the moment as well. As you can see, not covered. So we'll try and get him for 30. Probably not going to happen. So he wants 40. All right, well, Marcel's going to come in. I think he's a really good hand to have. Of course, most of these guys we can actually go back and sign. So it's not going to be too big of an issue once we have some money. But at the moment, we just can't... We can't splash out. And it, it does suck, but at the same time... Alright, this guy doesn't look too bad. Murray Firth. I think he'll be, he'll be a decent talent. He's only going to cost us 30 as well. So we'll get him in. Uh, like I said, some of these guys will probably be let go eventually. I feel like this is more just to, to fill out the roster to begin with. I mean, Primetime Jack Pride is definitely a guy I want to get in. If you watched my uh, recent TCW live stream series that I've been doing. You'll know that he is, uh, he's quite good. Anyway, our boy Ralph Liotta. Ralph could be a decent option as well. How much is he? He's only going to be 30. Uh, but unfortunately, he's based in the Mid-Atlantic. So, yeah, we'd have to pay for the travel. Who's this guy? Riley Patton. 
looks like he could be a decent worker for us. At least at the start. He's got dreadful star quality. But he's relatively cheap. We've got Robin Newman. I think we'll definitely sign Newman. I'm a big fan of his, even though he's he looks relatively bad. But let's uh let's get Robin Newman. I want to try oh, okay. Will he do 30? Oh, is, he, is he gonna want covered Oh, he's gonna want covered travel, isn't he? Alright, never mind, Robin. Who is this? We've got Rocco Renoir. Renoir? Renoir. Yeah, I don't know. My uh, French pronunciation is is not too good. Yeah, a lot of these guys are just... I mean, Spencer Edmund, he looks okay. Actually, let's actually have a look at his stats. He does look quite good, though. He could actually be a star for us. Let's let's sign him. Perfect. All right, there we go. So he's another 30 worker. I, I feel like that's kind of enough. Because we only really need about six or seven guys. And like I said, maybe we'll go for one more talented Canadian. I mean, most of our guys are currently with ACPW, so... Make of that what you will. This guy looks relatively good as well, so we might get him in. Really bad psychology, but Virgil Voss. Virgil the Boss Voss. Not too bad. Anything else? I mean, he looks ridiculous. Zack Attack. Yeah, he's not great either. Zombie boy. Interesting one. Never really uh, seen him yet. He's actually really quite good. Really good flashiness on him. Anyway, let's, let's go Virgil Voss, I think. Sort of our last signing for now. Like I said, some of these guys will be let go. The ones that aren't really too talented. Uh, but let's also search for one other guy. Uh, so let's go wrestler. Uh, can work in Canada to hire. Male. And then let's go. I kind of want someone with like decent basics and decent psychology. So let's go like that. I mean, yeah, again, we, we pretty much have to... Yeah, let's go based in Canada as well. I feel like that's kind of the, the only real way we're going to get a good gauge on someone that's going to not want to be paid to travel. This guy would, though, unfortunately. Alistair Shufflebottom. Now, Ant-Man could come in. Not too big of a fan. Art Reed. How expensive is he going to be, though? 160 per show. I don't think we can afford that. Definitely can't afford Bobby Thomas. He's on 600. Yeah, most of these guys. What about Jason? Jason Van Pelt. He actually might be able to come in. Only on 40 per show. Okay, let's let's go with Jason Van Pelt. Actually, let, let's wait. Let's let's go through the rest of the the workers here. So Mighty Kavanaugh. I mean, he could be a, a big signing for us in the future. Really good star quality. Pretty good on the mic as well. And everything else is not too bad. Of course, a former North of the Border wrestler. He would actually be a, a decent top star. Raphael would be another good shout in the future. Uh, but right now, we just don't really have the money to afford him. Stan Manor would be good as well. But obviously, right now, we would have to pay for his travel. So let's go Jason Van Pelt. And I guess for now, he'll probably be our champion. Well, I guess we'll find that out in the next episode. But 
I think that's going to be our roster. So let's advance forward maybe a week and let's sort of, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Like I said, I want to at least book one show for this episode, possibly two. And I hope you guys are really looking forward to the series. I feel like I haven't played TEW recently and I feel like it's kind of been missing from my life a little bit. Anyway, we've got our first few contracts here. So we've got Americana Jr. We've got Captain Canada. We've got Murray Firth. And we've got Jason Van Pelt. Perfect. All right, so I think everybody else is going to be good there as well. I'm looking forward to this. I feel like this is so... Are we already up to the event? Oh, okay. Could be a bit of a problem. Um, again, we don't actually need anybody, so we may as well just run through. Uh, let's put together a storyline. We only need one storyline, so we may as well... Uh, essentially just put everybody into the storyline. Uh, so we do have four wrestlers, so that's actually good. Uh, let's call it the beginning, I guess. We'll go like that. Let's also add in, uh, not create a new storyline. Let's add a worker in there. Let's add Alexander Robinson. He can be the mouthpiece for now. Uh, he's also, of course, going to be the road agent, so... So it'll be pretty interesting to see how it will sort of go down, I guess. And of course we have uh, zero popularity, so we're expecting 10 fans. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We've got a backstage incident already. Oh, lovely. Okay, Murray Firth already... Small negative impact. Okay, Murray Firth is probably going to be the first guy that we, uh, we get out of here. All right, let's pull a cheeky little rib there. I mean, yeah, nothing doing. All right, so let's get into it. I mean, it's going to be very simple, especially for these first few shows. Uh, we only have three workers. Do we not have Jason Van Pelt, or is he not available tonight? I'm guessing that's probably what it is. Uh, absent workers, yep. Jason Van Pelt. Okay, so we're going to need to get someone else apart from him. Because that's not really going to work for me. Okay, so we've got three workers, but that's fine. What we can essentially do is have them all take on each other once. Uh, I feel like we need to learn the roster a little bit. So he does have good stamina. Uh, I think this is probably going to be the better match. Oh, we have no referee either. Uh, so essentially what we're going to have to do is have Murray be the referee, for, for, you know, at least for this first show. Perfect. All right, let's give Americana the victory. Probably he might actually be the first champion we get. It's, uh, I think we'll run a bit of a tournament in the next episode. I feel like that could be interesting. Obviously, if you've watched my uh, Black Canvas Grappling series, you know I do love a good tournament. So this other match, let's do Murray taking on Captain Canada. Give that 12 minutes. Captain Canada can get a victory in this one because obviously we already don't like Murray. Murray's already a bit of a bit of a nuisance on us. So there we go. That's our second match. And then our final match is going to be Murray taking on Americana. All right, so there we go. And obviously, Americana going to pick up the victory in that one. Murray not having a, a great night at the uh, first show of the company. All right, one of the matches needs to be storytelling, uh, which I guess can be this one. It really doesn't matter. And let's also work the crowd. Actually, we don't need to work the crowd. Let's let's do an angle. Uh, what's our problem? Okay, just announces. That's that's fine. 
Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have... I wanted to have Robinson, but I don't think he can be the road agent in the angle as well. So let's have... Uh, I guess we can have Murray be the road agent. And what we want to do is have... Let's go an eight-minute angle and have Alexander Robinson introduce our first main event for tonight, which is obviously going to be Americana and Captain Canada. And of course, we, we don't actually have faces or heels, so we don't need to worry about anything like that. So that's going to kick the show off. I think that's actually not a bad first show for our local to global. And obviously, the that's a really good angle. We, we get a 57. That feels almost too good, but obviously Robinson is kind of a little bit OP at the moment. He does have like 50 popularity in Canada, and he's also relatively good on the mic. Uh, but unfortunately, Captain Canada getting an initial rating of poor for his gimmick. That's not going to help us too much. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. Mm, Alright, it's not too bad, actually. We go into our first match, which gets a 29, where we have Americana Jr. defeating Murray Firth in 11.33 by pinfall with an American Crush. Murray gets a great rating for his gimmick. Not a bad match, either. We then go into a 21 where we have Captain Canada defeating Murray Firth in 12.02 by submission with a Montreal Crab. I mean, that's a relatively good match as well, considering both their in-ring performances are lower than the match rating. And the main event doesn't actually do as well. Um, and obviously, I think that might be why we got penalized for seeing another special guest referee. But the main event getting a 26, where we have Americana Jr. defeating Captain Canada in just under 20 minutes by pinfall with an American crush. Yeah, good match. Obviously, the, the first match on the show was the best, but that's not too bad. We actually get a 31 for our overall show rating. Obviously, the angle greatly sort of increasing what it probably would have been would have been relatively low, I think. Maybe like a 25. But yeah. As you can see, increasing our popularity in that one region of Ontario. And, you know, I think for a, for a debut show with three workers and a road agent, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. Anyway, here we go. Finally getting our referee. Really could have used him. Marcel Lafleur is a very talented worker. Uh, Spencer Edmund... Yeah, he's also really good, isn't he? Yeah. And finally, Virgil Voss. Now, I want to sign one more worker. Uh, only because... Yeah, we can't actually use the guy we just signed last. Uh, but unfortunately, most of these guys are looking pretty expensive. And like I said, I really don't want to get Ant-Man. I just I don't like the look of him. Alright, we might have to lower... I mean, Raphael would be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect for our first champion. This is so expensive, and I don't want to go too far into debt. Stan? Uh, did we have to pay? Yeah, we had to pay for Stan. To pay for Raphael? Yes, we also have to pay for Raphael. Okay. Let's, uh, let's drop this. Uh, let's keep the basics high. Let's go 60 psychology. Uh, who else pops up? I mean, Cal Sanders would be very decent. I feel like he's a, a really solid worker. Doesn't have much popularity. Would he... He would also need to be covered for his travel. What about Dagger? I don't think he would need to be because he's working for ACPW. Uh, we could get him in. Uh, Graham Gorman. I know Graham's a really bad backstage person. Hmm. 
I mean, Preston Fuller, eh. And he's in Alberta, so he would need to be covered as well. Yeah, Ted Brady. What about Topher? We might be able to get Topher. Let's go for Topher Smith. He's going to be 60 per show, so that's a little bit more expensive than I kind of want to be paying as well, but... Yeah, he wants 60. I guess we'll give it to him. Okay, that, that should be okay. So as you can see, we're $785 in debt at the moment. So that's fine. Did we gain a point of popularity? We did not. Okay. That's got me a little bit worried because we... We need as much popularity as quick as possible. To be gaining some money through sponsors. Which is... Ultimately, probably going to be the, the only way we get ourselves out of debt. Of course, we start the game with zero dollars in the bank. It can be very tough. And I think the you can run one show per month and eventually become profitable. But it's very risky to do it that way, I feel like anyway. All right, so there we go. Tofar coming in. Uh, we, we might get rid of Van Pelt. I'm not sure if he's going to be working with them every week. Uh, so who's he working for? I guess we can actually go into him and have a look. I guess he's working for... He's currently the Oli's trio champion. He's working for SciShow as well. Which I think was where he was the last show. Anyway, as you can see, there's not a lot of talent at the beginning of the game for us to sort of sign in Canada. I mean, one of the things we could have done was possibly go for women as well, because there are a few Canadian women that are young and, you know, working for certain companies or they're unemployed. That would have been a, a relatively good option as well. Possibly have a second brand and run women-only shows. That could also be interesting. Something to think about. Anyway, I would like some feedback from you guys. Okay, so there we go. The head booker position of BMCW is now available. Following a change in ownership. Honest Frank. Okay, here we go. New CEO for our direct rivals. I'm looking forward to this, man. All right, so this next show hopefully will be a lot better than our first one was. All right, we've got a successful rib there as well, so that's nice. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, we're expecting 11 fans for this show. Uh, I'm kind of happy. We're, we're obviously improving a little bit. All right, what is our main event going to be? I think we're going to go with Topher. Let's go with Topher and Van Pelt. I feel like they are our two biggest roster members at the moment. And I think we'll go Topher for the victory. We're obviously paying him a little bit more. I think, can we call this match? We might even be able to call it. Because they, they both have pretty good psychology. Yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to try and call this match. It feels really early to be calling matches, but... Obviously, with the way that the, the wages are in this game... I feel like they are slightly different. Anyway, the next match is going to be Marcel Lefleur... Taking on Virgil Voss. Uh, we'll give 12 minutes to that match. I think I want to do maybe four matches on this card. Again, that might be pushing it a little bit, but let's go... Let's try and do four. Four singles matches. All right.
Let's go Spencer and Americana. Actually, we might just do three. I don't really want to do another repeat match. But let's go Americana. All right, there we go. And again, we'll do another angle. Uh, I guess we could maybe use these guys for an angle. Yeah, so Jason's relatively good on the mic. And Toph is also relatively good. Let's uh, let's add them to that story. Actually, let's make a storyline just just for them. I think uh, let's call it uh title challenges. And let's have Van Pelt and Topher. I might throw in Lafleur in there as well. Uh, okay, Van Pelt's. Uh, let's put Spencer in there as well, I guess. Let's take Van Pelt out of this one. And then put him into this one. Uh, I guess we'll remove Spencer out of there as well. Let's check him into the beginning. So, yeah, both Spencer and Virgil Voss can go in here. All right, I like the look of that. That's not too bad. So let's do that angle. Let's have Tofar. Let's have both of them be in the angle. And uh, both be rated on entertainment. I think we'll script both of them. Let's give them eight minutes. So like a decent amount of time. And of course they're both trying to establish themselves. As the future champion. Whenever the belt is announced. All right, there we go. Any penalties? Storytelling match, need to remember that. Okay, there we go. Now we should be fine. All right, let's run our second show here. We're starting off with a 31, where we have Americana Jr. defeating Spencer Edmond in 12-13 by pinfall with an American crush. Fiery underdog gimmick for Spencer, getting an initial rating of great. I do like Spencer. I do like him. And he's pretty talented. Yeah, it's a pretty good first match. Obviously, Americana doing work early on. The next match getting a 27, where we have Marcel Lafleur defeating Virgil Voss in 11.38 by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. Both getting initial rating of great for their gimmicks. And they both have pretty good chemistry together. And it lifted the match. So this is something really positive early on. Obviously our second ever show and our first time using both of these guys. And we find some good chemistry. That's, that's beneficial. We also got 12 people. One more than expected. All right, we then go into a 30 rated angle. Uh, unfortunately, Jason Van Pelt. Initial rating of poor for his clean cup gimmick. Luckily, Topher got adequate for his so that's that's good obviously van pelt's probably going to leave us relatively soon depending on what happens with his other shows and the main event does really well i thought you know these these are our sort of top guys uh, and we get a 41 for our second show's main event where we have tofa smith defeating jason van pelt in 2003 by pinfall with a go far suicide dive. Yeah, it's a really good match. It's a really good show, actually. And we get a 36, which is better than our first show, despite having a much lower angle, increasing our popularity in one region. Nice, that was that was good. I like that show. That show felt a lot more I don't know, it felt more professional, I guess, just having different competitors obviously it's going to cost us a bit that costs us about a thousand the the main cost is the show cost at the moment but i'm assuming our production is yeah the lowest obviously because we haven't done anything with that so that's interesting we've got two percent momentum now do we get a, a size increase we still have not gotten a size increase not a size increase, a popularity increase. We're still at zero in Ontario. That's got me a little bit worried. 
We are running in Ontario, right? Yeah, Ontario, Ontario. Let's uh let's take a little quick look at the editor. Uh, in-game editor. We want to have a look at our company. So let's have a look at CWC. Now popularity is well, it's zero. Does it not show you the? Does it really not show you the uh, the decimals anymore? Okay, that's really going to frustrate me. If we can't see decimals, maybe I'm just looking at something incorrectly. Hopefully that's the case, but yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, that's got me worried. After two shows with a, a wrestling industry like we do. I mean, let's let's do one more show. And hopefully we'll get an increase. Otherwise, I will be possibly stuck. Because if we can't get any popularity, we are going to struggle with the finances. And we only have, I think, a year and six months to be fully out of debt. Otherwise, the company will shut. And that's obviously the, the worst case scenario we can, we can predict. And obviously, my game plan was to, to run the shows, get the popularity, get the sponsorship money, and then hopefully start turning a profit and hopefully be profitable, profitable by the end of the year. But if that doesn't happen, I'm not sure if we change or what we do. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's ho let's hope and pray we gain a point of popularity after this next show. I mean, it's saying that's increasing our popularity, but it hasn't actually gone up yet after two. Hopefully, the th you know, third time's a charm. And again, the the popularity increases might be a bit lower because these are only weekly events, and I know they. I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure they do get lower, lower popularity increases as opposed to monthly events or annual events. All right, we've got another incident here, this time Virgil Voss. Uh, let's give him a slap on the wrist. He's also getting a small negative impact, so that's not great. And now we have Topher Smith pulling a mean-spirited rib on Marcel. Yeah. Things are, things are not going too well at the moment. All right, let's go another generic venue. And hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> we'll get that popularity increase. All right, so for this main event, I think we'll go with, let's go with Spencer in the main event. And he can take on Topher. And I think we'll give Topher the victory. So it's going to be a 20 minute main event. And once again, Topher. Going to look pretty strong. I don't think we can call the match. No, 55 psychology there for Spencer. Will have to be scripted. That's fine though. So there we go. That's our main event. Let's do a tag team match. Let's go Ameri Let's see if Americana and Captain Canada have chemistry together because that'd be pretty nice and they can take on Virgil Voss and Murray Firth let's give Captain Canada the victory there as well be beneficial for him gain a bit of momentum okay and then a final match let's go I guess Van Pelt can take on Marcel uh, do I want Marcel to win? I think, I think I want Marcel to win. This could actually beat the main event. Didn't really think about that. Okay. Let's work the crowd with this match. The tag match can be storytelling. Because obviously we need one of those match types. And then let's do an angle for Topher on Edmund. 
uh, sorry, Spencer, Edmund. All right, there we go. That should be pretty good. All right, let's run this one as well. I thought that was going to be a really good match. We get a 43 for our opening contest where we have Marcel Lafleur defeating Jason Van Pelt in 11.33 by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. Marcel with a 41 in ring performance. Very solid. We then go into a 30 rating for our tag team match where we have Americana Jr. and Captain Canada defeating Murray Firth and Virgil Voss in 11.44. When Captain Canada submitted Virgil with a Montreal Crab. Obviously, Americana carrying the match. Unfortunately, also, no positive chemistry between them. I think we will put them together as a tag team. And maybe call them the, the Patriots or something like that. I don't know. Could be cool. Uh, we then go into our angle, which gets a 33 rating from Topher Smith. Of course, he was the only one rated in the angle. And the main event does really, really badly, getting a 28. Yeah, both these guys off their game, and Spencer was really off his game. Uh, but we do have Topher Smith defeating Spencer Edmund in 2017 by pinfall with a gopher suicide dive. All right, so there we go. We get a 31 for the overall show rating. And again, increasing our popularity in one region. But like I said, the big question, will it improve our popularity? Can we finally get one popularity in Ontario? That'd be the perfect way to end the episode. Let's have a look. Yes. There we go. One popularity. All right. So the journey begins. This is going to be the end of the first episode, guys. Please show your support. Smash the like button. Local to global. Finally here. And I'm super excited. I really like this company. I really like the sort of thought process I put in behind, obviously, putting another local company in the game to compete with. And then, obviously, our main goal, apart from becoming global, is to beat CWA. It's as simple as that, really. And obviously, it's not going to be simple at all. Anyways, if you enjoyed the episode, like I said, guys, drop a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. With the notification bell turned on, only about, I think, 8.8%, slowly increasing on the channel. But most of you subs do not have the notifications turned on. And of course, you're going to want to be notified when these episodes come out in the future. Apart from that, guys, as always, hope you enjoyed. Take it easy and goodbye.